All right, welcome back to the final round here on Yahoo Finance. Miles, I've been with you in New York, and it's time now for our call of the day. And today we are talking about the stock of the day, and that is Tesla. We look at the chart here. The stock is up some 8% above $1,200 a share for the first time. If we go back uh, to the before times, the crazy uh, bull run of January, February, Tesla, really the poster child of that run. It seemed nuts when the stock got to 900 bucks a share, did that right around the market's all-time high in mid-February, and now we're back at 1,200, as uh, things, of course, would naturally go. Uh, the peg here, the news that Tesla reporting uh, more deliveries in the second quarter, significantly more than the street expected. And Shauna Smith, we have uh, Wedbush's Dan Ives calling this a potential paradigm changer for the company. Um, but when I think about this news for Tesla, it really just continues a string now of uh, six to eight quarters where the results on the business have been quite good, but the story is just whatever Elon is doing. And uh, we can get into the tweets in a bit, but just thinking through what Dan's commentary says here, um, it's it's kind of more of the same from a company that execution wise uh, has been knocking it out of the park really since the end of 2018. It is more of the same. I don't think there's anything really new here in this report. Just the fact that Dan Ives is being more constructive on the company, saying that they really have a bright future ahead if they do meet certain goals. And we can get into that in a little bit. But I think, I mean, Ives called this a home run. And I think just strictly looking at the numbers, whether or not you're a Tesla fan or not, the fact that they did deliver over 90,000 cars uh, in the second quarter, obviously, is a huge win for Tesla. And remember that a lot of analysts kind of uh, tamed some of their expectations because we were in the midst of of the coronavirus outbreak and how big of an impact that could possibly have on Tesla. We saw the impact that it had on a lot of the more traditional automakers earlier this month when we got the June and the uh, Q2 numbers from names like GM and Toyota. Obviously, both of those names uh, announcing a pretty significant decline in the second quarter. But Tesla here beating the street's expectations by a wide margin. In terms of why Ives is bullish here for the future when it comes to Tesla, it comes to two things, really drills down to two things that we have talked about before. One is this battery technology day that's actually happening later this year, but all ties in to Tesla's battery and how whether or not that will prove to be a, a huge win for Tesla and help it stand out even more amongst its peers. I think that that will be a case. And then, of course, the second thing, and what was one of the standout, standouts here and when we got those delivery numbers for the second quarter is just the demand that we're seeing in China, and particularly what we're seeing with the Model 3. And Ives saying that, quote, this was exactly from his note, that China remains a ray of shining light for Tesla in a dark global macro environment. So obviously here, he's very bullish on China. And then he goes as far to say that he actually thinks Tesla is going to deliver 100,000 Model 3s built in China in the first year of its operations at its Shanghai plant. So overall, these are pretty optimistic estimates when you take a look at what Tesla has going for them uh, in the short term, at least. But Miles, you pointed to it at uh, the, in the intro here, and it's very important to point out that Tesla shares, they have had quite a run. I mean, they're approaching year-to-date levels close to 200 hundred percent gains. When you take a look at just from strict, strictly valuation standpoint, I think there's a lot of questions here about whether or not this a huge momentum to the upside to continue can continue. And remember that this is all coming despite the fact that Tesla has yet to turn a, a profit for a full year. So lots of questions there. But I think it's fair to say that a lot of these Tesla bulls, they don't want to bet against Elon. They see so much future potential for the company. They see Tesla as the automaker of the future. So I think that's a big reason why we've seen such a tremendous gain in Tesla stock over the last couple of months. And look, Shauna, stocks only go up now. So it, it only makes sense uh, that Tesla shares would be up uh, m even more than the market in this environment. But where there is Tesla news, uh, often Elon tweets follow just within the last uh, hour or so. Elon, once again, taunting the shorts, uh, tweeting, who wears short shorts? Said they'll make some uh, shorts with red and gold trim. He's going to send them to the Short Seller Enrichment Commission, which is what he has called the SEC from time to time. And Melody Hom, uh, you and I remember, uh, I guess it must have been the old studio, 2018, 2019. It seemed like every day all we kind of did was just talk about what Elon did on the <laughs> internet. And look, that's a fine story, right? Uh, business media is is supposed to be entertaining, um, but it is amazing, the, the endurance that Elon has for going with the same online shtick, considering all the other things you would imagine he could do with his time. 
the enduring hubris, you could say. I mean, I couldn't help but laugh. I actually laughed out loud when we first saw the Who Wears Short Shorts. He's continuing. I'm sure we're going to expect more throughout the day. The latest one is SEC, three-letter acronym. Middle word is Elon's. Uh, not going to lie. I'm curious about these radiant red satin with gold trim shorts. We know they will sell well. Uh, if th they're posted on the Boring Company site, I can tell you for a fact, people will be wearing the hats, have the flamethrowers, have those like boxing shorts sported for the 4th of July weekend. That would have been a great peg, uh, not to be the marketing team here for Tesla. But I do feel like ultimately this is, we had so much cynicism around how the cult of personality could actually translate to sales. Just because you follow someone on Twitter, just because you buy into all the paraphernalia, doesn't mean you'll buy a $70,000 car. In this case, it just shows, I, I don't know, we should be doing a survey of all the Tesla owners out there who, whether it's correlated exactly with Elon's cult of personality, with his sort of uh, chutzpah and his persona that clearly seems to resonate with a wide swath of folks. Let's keep in mind the 90K is still a small number overall, and we don't know the geographic breakdown. We don't actually know the model breakdown yet. Um, that was not disclosed by the company, but I have a feeling that China really led the way when it comes to this quarter. And, you know, Melody, just going back to, to Elon's kind of cult of personality, I mean, think about it. I, I, I know people have made arguments on, oh, well, you know, business is the new sports and it makes sense that you'd have um, business figures. You know, a lot of people know who Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk are. But, I mean, Elon Musk is, I, I would say, a household name. And, and he runs a car company and a rocket company. That's, that's cool and all. But the marketing that he's done for his own brand um, and what that brand means to so many people, to your point, is worth – a lot more, I still think, to, to Tesla itself than how many cars they're selling. I mean, yes, the business of selling cars, they're exceeding expectations on that front, even though I know every short seller on the street will say it's a disaster and it's going to all collapse. And, and maybe they'll be right, but they've been very, very wrong in the last couple of years. Let's call it like it is. But Elon is like transcended any expectations you would ever have for what a business person should mean uh, popularly. Oh, 100%. And I know you mentioned Mark Zuckerberg. To be honest, I don't think they can be uh, brought up in the same breath. Because if you think about even Zuckerberg's stance, we get it. He's very powerful at this point. We understand uh, the sort of monopoly that Facebook is uh, in many regards when it comes to digital advertising. But in reality, no one is lusting after the Zuckerberg uh, sort of mantra or persona or wanting to wear hoodies because of Zuckerberg. Yeah, sure. That was a Silicon Valley ethos perhaps 10 years ago, uh, eight years ago. But just seeing sort of the very brash um, unfiltered side, whether it's the Kanye, uh, who of course and uh, was hanging out with Elon Musk a couple of days ago, just seeing that sort of attitude really resonate in this time, perhaps as PC culture has taken uh, such force in our society, it's really fascinating to me because in some ways they're on the opposite ends of the spectrum, right? The way that society is supposed to be, the way that we're supposed to be filtering ourselves and not speaking out and really emphasizing things like Black Lives Matter. But then you see the Dave Portnoy's, you see the Gary Vaynerchuk's, you see the Elon Musk's of the world actually creating very sustainable businesses that do very well and uh, I feel like are only going to continue to grow in this sort of atmosphere. I, and I know we have to go, and Melody, you and I could do this uh, all day, but I, this does get to a take that I've been workshopping uh, with some people that I, I don't think that cancel culture actually exists. I think people just pretend it exists. But if you look at what does succeed and what does work, um, all the people who claim to like be out here getting canceled just get more successful. So I think it, I think it's kind of a, a false flag, I guess, in, in building a, a fictitious narrative around um, what they do and don't. Anyway, I think it's also fair. You're right. Maybe I have business brain where it's like, I think Mark Zuckerberg is relevant, but you're right. No one really cares who he is. They all think he's Jesse Eisinger. Uh, like, like, or Jesse Eisenberg, um, Eisinger is a journalist. Uh, like they think he's the guy from the movie. They don't actually know what Mark Zuckerberg looks like now. So exactly. all right. you're right. I won't disrespect Elon by comparing him to Mark Zuckerberg in the popular consciousness. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.